everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am super excited to share with all of you my recent haul from the Sephora VIB sale. So this is one of my favorite sales of the year. It does happen biannually. And because I do pick up a lot of makeup from Sephora, I am a Rouge member and get 20% off. And so these are items I've had in my wish list for quite a while and was super excited to finally pick up. So for today's video, I will run through all of the products and put as many of them on my face as possible to do a full face of makeup for you guys. So if you're curious about what I picked up, then just stick around. So to start off, I picked up a couple skincare items. So first I have this jumbo size of the Pharmacy Honey Halo Moisturizer. I'm actually currently using this moisturizer as well. It's one of my favorites and I have gone through several tubs of the smaller version. This is my first time actually picking up the jumbo size. So let me just show you guys how big it is in case you're curious. So this is the jumbo size. Similar to the regular size, it has that wooden top and comes with a metal spatula that is magnetized to stick to the top. So I really like this packaging. It's very luxe. Everything feels very heavy from the glass bottle to the magnetized wood lid. And this is a really nice touch as well for sanitation. If you're someone who likes honey smells, then I think you'll really enjoy this because it really smells like honey in a way that's not cloying, but actually smells pretty natural. And so I really enjoy this. I find that it performs really well under makeup it's really great if you have normal to dry skin like myself but it is pretty pricey so i love getting this whenever it's on sale next i have this eye cream from mirad this is my all-time favorite eye cream i've gone through many many bottles of this Similar to the pharmacy, it is quite expensive, so I usually try to get this on discount. I think this is like $80 for what is a very small package. But what I love about this is that it performs really well under makeup, under sunscreen. It never pills. It never gives me milia. I am someone who struggles a lot with milia on my eyes. And so I love how easygoing this is. And it does have a little bit of retinol in it. And typically my skin is pretty sensitive to that, but I haven't had any issues with this product. So I would highly recommend this as well, especially if you want something that just feels really comfortable on the eyes and doesn't really mess up any of your other skincare products, but does seem to have some positive impacts over time. Now, in terms of makeup, first off, we have this new Makeup Forever palette. I do have their previous one, which is this contour palette, but they just released this one, which comes in two colorways, light, medium, and medium deep. I picked up the light medium, and so this comes both with complexion products, so you have sort of like foundations, bronzer, contour, and then you have these blushes and highlighters. And so if you guys have been watching my channel recently, you know I've been really, really enjoying this palette. And I do have a forthcoming video just dedicated to this palette in case you're interested in swatches, demos, so on and so forth. But I decided to pick this one up because this is basically kind of the all-in-one version of this. As much as I love this, it doesn't have any blush in it. So I like that this is kind of similar, but does come with those blushes. In case you're curious, this is what the complexion looks like side by side. So this new one is definitely a little bit lighter, but let me know if you guys would be interested in a side-by-side -side comparison with these products. But I've been absolutely loving the formulation of the palette I already have, and so I was really excited about this one even though I think it's a little bit redundant to have both if this one came out before the other one I definitely would have picked up this one instead but given how much I've been using the other one I thought it might still be worth it to try out this one next we have the Tom Ford Soleil Terra bronzer so this is definitely an old product it's been around for a long time I feel like this is one of the most talked about bronzers on YouTube but I finally picked this up because I've been eyeing this forever. Comes in this cute little dust sleeve here. And here we have the gorgeous packaging. It's actually a lot smaller than I thought. I thought for some reason as a bronzer, this would be bigger. It looks a lot more like a blush in size. So this is how the closure looks. And then you can open it like this. Again, really small, kind of surprising to me. In general, less luxe in terms of packaging. It's really pretty, but this is a very lightweight component. 
I am intrigued though, the shade Terra has been raved about by so many people. It does have that sort of cooler undertone that I've been really enjoying. I'm really curious how this compares swatch-wise with my favorite Pat McGrath bronzer in the shade Nude Honey. So I'll have to do a comparison there, but I'm pretty stoked to finally try this out. Next, we have a ton of blushes. I think I went a little bit blush happy in this past haul. So first off, we have this Natasha Denona My Dream Mini Blush and Highlight. I picked this up because it got surprisingly really good reviews and I feel like this will be really handy for travel. You can see this is a teeny tiny little blush, very, very compact. And here we have the component. It's a highlight on this side, a medium toned blush, and then a deeper toned blush here. I am really curious what this all looks like swirled together because I think realistically, I'm not going to be able to, you know, kind of distinguish each of these with a blush brush. So we'll see how this looks, but I'm hoping this is basically a really great everyday shade that will go with any makeup look. Another mini palette I have is this Blush and Glow from Charlotte Tilbury. So this I think is gonna be a little bit pinkier than the other one. So this is the deeper shade. We have Tan Deep as the blush and then Doré Fonce as the highlighter. Not really sure how to pronounce that. And here we have the cute component, really pretty. And here are the shades. So I do think this highlighter is probably gonna be a little bit deep for my skin tone, but this blush looks really pretty. Next we have the very viral new Rare Beauty blushes. This is the Soft Pinch Luminous Blush. So basically these are in the highlighter formula that they came out with, but with the shades of the Soft Pinch Liquid Blushes. Here we have the component, really cute, very lightweight. This is definitely not a luxury feeling product, but very adorable packaging. And I got this in the shade Joy. I've been watching a lot of videos featuring this product and I felt like this one almost had a slightly dual chromatic quality to it with that golden shimmer. So I was very intrigued and it looks really, really pretty. And now the last blush I have, yes, I did pick up a lot of blushes, is this House Labs blush in the shade Pomelo. Similar to the other ones, this is pretty lightweight packaging. I think it looks a little bit more luxe than it actually feels in hand. They have changed the packaging and shrunk this down compared to what it used to be. So if you bought the OG House Labs blushes, you got a lot more product. I've heard great things about the shade Pomelo Peach though, so I'm hoping this will be the perfect spring shade. Really, really pretty. So without further ado, let's dive into all of these products. So first off, let's start out with this Makeup Forever palette, which I'm gonna use for my complexion today. Super, super pretty. I honestly feel kind of bad touching this, but let's do some quick swatches. So let's go on this side first. I guess I'll try to do from lighter to deeper. So this one is really, really light, but then it goes up quite a bit actually. Huh, interesting. If you guys can see, that's quite a leap from the first shade to the second shade, which is interesting. That's very different from the other palette where I feel like there's less of a leap. Let's swatch these as well. I will say this means I might have to kind of cocktail a shade for my skin tone. For the contour palette, I'm able to use a couple of the shades directly on my face without mixing, but I feel like my skin tone is kind of between these two at the beginning. And then we have this cool toned contour shade and this warm toned bronze shade. So that is a really nice contour. The bronze does look a little bit yellowy and orangey, so we'll see how that actually looks on the skin. And then on this side, we have these two highlights. This one looks really pretty. So this one's very kind of translucent on the skin, doesn't have much base. This one definitely could be used more as a blush topper, as you can see. It has a little bit of that peachy pink hue to it. And then the star of the show, at least for me, is definitely these blushes. I am super intrigued by how these look. So they look like they apply kind of sheer actually to begin with. We'll see how much we can actually build up that pigment, but that's nice for a blush, I think. And then we have these deeper blushes as well. It's kind of interesting. So these definitely have a little bit more oomph. 
I do like the variety here. I feel like you have everything from kind of a bright punchy coral to a nice pink to more of a berry tone to more of a terracotta. So this will have you covered in terms of a variety of different makeup looks. And here's a close up of all of those shades. I'm not going to do a full comparison, but I did want to just compare with some of these shades from my contour palette. So usually I go in with these two shades. So let's do some comparisons on the back of my hand. So these are the two that are kind of closest to my complexion. You can see it's a little bit redundant having both of these in the palette, but I do find they work really well for my skin tone. Now I'm curious how that compares to this shade over here and this shade, since these two kind of look like the most similar. So let's just swatch these down here. Interesting. Okay, so depth wise, I would say the new ones definitely look a tiny bit deeper and also peachier. This one's a lot more peachy. This one's a lot more orangey. So, hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this looks on the skin. I feel like this new palette's probably not going to be as good of a shade match because this is very pinky compared to my skin tone. So bringing you guys closer, let's dig into this palette. So I'm going to first just go into this shade since this is the one that I think is closest to my skin tone and we'll see how this goes. Okay, with this fluffy brush, not a lot is applying. So I think it doesn't look too off in terms of shade. Let me try to dig in a little bit more. These palettes do start looking very messy <laughs> very quickly because it's a little bit hard to just get one of the shades. Okay, yeah, I think this brush might be a little bit too fluffy. Let's go in instead with my BK Beauty 109 brush. This is the brush I typically go in with and I'm going to take much more of that. Okay, on the plus side, I feel like actually it doesn't look as off on my skin as I was anticipating. I was a little bit worried based on these swatches, but I think because this formula is sort of a like light to medium coverage, if you just use a lighter layer, it's definitely workable. I am surprised though how much jumping there is in this palette compared to the previous one because the previous one was sort of like for all skin tones theoretically, but really only works, I think, if you have up to a medium skin tone. This one is supposed to be light and medium, but I feel like there's a huge jump from here to here. Okay, there we go. So I think you can see a little bit of the impact of this formula now. On this side of my face, it's just a bit more perfected, still looks very natural, doesn't look very makeup-y. And then this side, I don't have anything. Let's go in with some of the lighter shade as well. I'm gonna just use this kind of towards the center of my face to brighten things up a bit. Also just to add a bit more coverage to the center of my face. Oh, and I just realized I forgot one more product that I did pick up is this Brow Harmony from Rare Beauty. So I will demo for that for you guys as well today. I feel like that product has been raved about but also sold out a lot. And so I was excited to finally pick it up in this sale. I'm usually someone who likes tinted brow products, but I thought I would give it a try to see if I can get more of that laminated brow look. All right, so there we go. Here we have it on this side. I'm gonna take a little bit of this shade as well, just cause I wanna use more of these and apply this kind of on my forehead, which is a little bit more tan. And yeah, I think this is a good shade match actually for my forehead. I think these other two shades might be a little bit too deep for me. Alrighty, so I'm gonna just do the same thing to the other side of my face now. Alrighty, here we go. So here we have it on both sides of my face. And I feel like the luminosity is definitely making my face look a little bit lighter. I didn't put it on my neck at all. So we'll have to, I think, do a little bit of bronzing to make things even out a bit more. The lightest shade is definitely pretty light. So especially the center of my face looks pretty light, but I think you can see just how healthy and luminous this finish is. It's overall very natural, looks really like your skin, but better. So I cleaned off my brush a bit. So now let's go into that contour shade and I'm just going to dab this along the hollows of my cheeks. You can see this is a very nice, cool toned contour. Again, I am curious how this compares to the contour in this palette. So let's actually do that swatch comparison. So this is the old palette. This is the new palette. 
And okay, I think they're basically the same shade. I feel like the old palette maybe has a tiny bit more depth, but they're, yeah, they're more or less the same. So, so yeah, if, if you don't already have one of these palettes, I think probably you only need one. Having both like I do is very much overkill. I think the contour palette especially is more suited for people who are makeup artists since it has a lot more complexion. This new one is kind of like an edited down version for everyday makeup users. So there we go, that's looking nice. Also just gonna put a little bit of this on my nose as well, just to give it some much needed dimension. Now let me go into this bronzer shade. So this looks pretty deep, let me First, just put this around the perimeter of my face. Yeah, this is a little bit deep for this palette, but I think I can make it work. Just need a tiny bit of this to get pretty good payoff. Taking a tiny bit of the two of those mixed together, I'm gonna run that along my jaw. And then similarly, I'm gonna mix these two a little bit for the nose as well. I feel like just the contour by itself is a little bit gray. All right, I think that was great for just some subtle contour. So now let's go into these blushes. So I do also have a bunch of powder blushes, but I'm going to just use a couple of these blushes kind of lightly. I'm not gonna build it up too much today because we have the powder as well, but let's start with this corally one. I'm gonna just put this kind of on the apples of my cheeks. Actually, I'm gonna try using all four of them. Let's see how they look that way. So there we go. Let me actually turn down the brightness. So here is the coral shade. Hopefully you guys can see that. Really pretty, very healthy kind of springtime look. Now let's go into this pinky shade. I'm gonna put this on the apple of this cheek. So you can see that's a lot more cool toned. Less pigmented, I would say. This definitely is taking a little bit of building up, but gives a really pretty subtle flush to the cheeks. Now I'm gonna take that berry tone and I'm gonna put that on the back here. So this is a little bit more pigmented, a little bit more cool toned. And then let's go into this shade and put it over here. Kind of a dusky terracotta shade. This one sort of goes well with the bronzer. All right, so here are all of those blushes on. Honestly, like on the cheeks, they don't look hugely dissimilar, but I think you can tell that this side is a bit more warm toned, this side is a bit more cool toned. And I think built up, you can probably see more of the differences. Now let's go in with these highlighters. So I'm gonna first go into this one over here and just put it on this side of the face. I don't know if you guys can see much of a difference. This has a little bit of gold sheen to it. I feel like my face is already looking pretty dewy with all of these layers. And on the other side, I'm gonna take some of this and just dab it on as well. These are pretty natural highlighters, so they're not gonna give you a really blinding highlight, but I think it does add some nice luminosity to the skin. Let me actually put a little bit in the center of my face as well. Alrighty, so there we go. Full face using pretty much all of these shades, actually. I think I used everything except this shade. So hopefully this gives you a good impression of this palette. My face is looking very dewy because I feel like I built this up quite a bit, but I will go off camera and powder and then be back for the other products. Actually, before I go off, I realized I forgot to do concealer. So I did get this little sample of the Very Valentino concealer. So let me go and show this with you guys in case you're curious about shade matches. So I'm gonna basically just open all of these <laughs> since I don't think I'm gonna be able to use these later, but I feel like I'm probably closest to this second shade here, LN3 but let's just open a bunch of these and see where this takes us. So let me start with this LN3 and just put this under the eye. Oh wow, this is quite high coverage, huh? As you can see, just a little bit goes quite a long way. Let me put a little bit on this side as well. But yeah, I think as a brightening shade, this LN3 goes pretty well. Let me blend this in with my BK Beauty brush. 
I have heard really rave reviews for this concealer, so I'm very intrigued. Yeah, it definitely gives you a decent amount of coverage. I should have put this on before my blush, but that's okay. We have a lot of powder blush later on to kind of even things out, but wow. Okay, I am impressed. As you guys can see, just a little bit definitely covered up my under eyes quite nicely. In terms of these other shades, let me take a little bit of the second one, which is MA2. I feel like I'm actually doing pretty well already on coverage, but let me just dab that in a few parts of my face just to see how the shade looks. It's a little bit yellowy in comparison to the Makeup Forever products I have on, but again, does provide good coverage. Let me take a little bit more of that LN3 shade and just put that around my mouth where I can always use a little bit of extra coverage. I am impressed with the texture of this concealer. I feel like it's very light and hydrating on initial application, but does provide good coverage. Okay, again, going into MA2, I feel like my perfect shade is somewhere in between these two. Let's use this to cover up the redness around my nose area. Alrighty, this is pretty nice. I feel like these sorts of samplers are kind of hit or miss in terms of how good of an impression they can give you of the product, but I do like the texture based on this one impression. There is a scent to this product though, which I'm not a huge fan of for my complexion, but overall I think it looks pretty good. And just to fix the blush a little bit. I'm going to just take my brush with no additional product and just dab that in over here so there's less of a harsh line. So I went off camera to do powder, eyeshadow, and lips. If you're curious what I have on my face, as always, everything will be linked in my description box below. So now let's get into this brow gel from Rare Beauty. I am very intrigued by this because I've heard so many rave reviews for this product and it has been sold out for the longest time. So here's the component, really simple, very minimalist. And let's see what this wand looks like. So yeah, pretty basic as well. Now my hairs are pretty unruly in terms of not wanting to go in any different direction than whatever they're already going in. So let's see whether this can actually change the shape of my brows. Oh, wow. Okay. Definitely has more hold than previous clear brow gels I've tried. Usually I go in with a pencil first and then a tinted brow gel, but let's try today just going in with this and then a brow pencil. Alrighty. Okay. So you can see kind of the difference between these two. Definitely on this side, things are looking a bit fluffier. I was able to push my hairs down. Wow, okay. I wouldn't say that I did the best job of shaping my brows, but I am impressed with how well this is holding the hairs. Like they are kind of going in the direction that I am pushing them. And it does kind of feel like they're getting glued down. So that's promising. Let me see on this side if I try to kind of brush them upward and outward how this looks. Oh, wow. Okay, definitely looking more voluminous than usual. So I'm gonna let that set down and then go in with some brow pencil just to refine the look. But so far, this is definitely the most intense hold I've ever gotten from a clear brow gel. So kudos to Rare Beauty for that. So now let's get into the bronzer. So let me first give you guys a swatch of this bronzer. It's actually pretty light, huh? Okay, so yeah, definitely got a light peachy tone. And yes, please ignore these. <laughs> these are remnants from the Makeup Forever swatches. Let me compare this with my Pat McGrath bronzer. This is my current favorite. Okay, so the Pat McGrath bronzer it's definitely a slightly different tone to it. I'm surprised actually the Terra bronzer has a little bit more of a reddish base to it. I thought it would be peachier, but they're actually very similar in depth. So that's promising because I do really love this shade. 
in case you're curious size wise, these are fairly similarly sized components. So now going in with my Niji Pro from Sonia G. Let me just pack a bit of this on. Ooh, okay. That looks pretty nice. As you can see, it's a pretty natural tone on my skin. There is a little bit of kick up in the pan because this is a pretty dry powdery formula, but it does actually show up nicely on my skin. I wasn't sure based on that swatch, but I think this is doing a pretty good job of that sort of brontour, which is typically what I want to go for, something that is bronzy, but not super orangey, so that it can still provide a little bit of that sense of a shadow. Ooh. Alrighty, I actually really like this so far. I think that looks really nice. Let's also just trace some along the chin as well. And then I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of that on my powder brush and also just sweep that along the sides of the nose. Great, so I actually really like that. I was a little bit disappointed when I first saw this component since, like I said, it's a little bit lighter and less luxe than I would expect for a $70 bronzer, but the shade and the formula is looking really nice. It's not totally flat matte, but it's also not luminous at all, so I think it works really well for contour and also for providing a bit of bronziness to the skin. So now let's swatch these many blushes that I have. So let's first go in with this House Labs Pomelo Peach Shade. Ooh, that is really pretty, very, very punchy. I'm excited for this shade because I feel like it has some of that pinkiness, which I've been really enjoying in blushes, but also a little bit of that warmth that will be perfect for spring and summer. Next to that, I'm going in with this Rare Beauty blush. Ooh, that's very silky smooth. And I'm gonna skip over this area with that remnant of a swatch and whew, wow. Okay, that is quite an intense swatch, more pigmented than what I anticipated. And as you can see, this is very, very glowy. You can see that this blush looks really matte in comparison to this one over here. Now for this My Dream blush, let me see if I can swatch each of these separately just to give you guys more of an impression of what this looks like. So here they are separately. We have the highlighter, really, really intense glow on that one. Then we have the lighter shade. This one is quite light. And then we have the deeper shade. Ooh, okay, that's really pretty and rosy. My hope is that this will basically be a really great everyday shade that I can use. And then finally, we have the Charlotte Tilbury. So I'm gonna swatch these two for you guys. Here is the blush. Ooh, wow, okay, that is very pigmented. If you guys can see, very terracotta. And then here is the highlight, also super pigmented. Ooh, okay, so these are actually all very different, which is great. We have some really orangey, highly pigmented blush here. We have nice rosy and very high shine highlight there. We have this apricot shimmery blush, and then we have this more matte peach blush. So now the real question is how I'm gonna get these all on my face, given that I do already have some blush on. So let's see. I guess I'm going to start out with the House Labs blush and I'm going to put some of this just kind of on the back of my cheek over here since it's matte and that's pretty. Less pigmented than I thought, so I actually think I can go in with a little bit more. Alrighty, yeah, I think that will be a really nice shade for the spring summertime, very nice. Sort of closer to the apple of my cheek, I'm gonna flip my brush over and go in with the Rare Beauty. Woo, okay. That was more pigmented than I thought, actually more pigmented than the House Labs and very, very shiny. So you guys can hopefully see, they're kind of similar shades, but very different textures. This one is very, very high shine. I would actually recommend being a bit careful when you're dipping into this because Definitely provides a decent punch of pigment. Very pretty though. I would be careful if you have a lot of texture on your cheeks. I don't think this is gonna be super flattering, but if you concentrate it on areas where you don't have as much texture, it is a very pretty shade. Okay, now on the other side, I'm gonna go in with the My Dream blush. And 
For today's look, I'm just gonna kind of sweep these all together because realistically that's probably what I would do anyway. And just put this on the apples of my cheeks. Ooh, okay, I do really like it actually. That is a really pretty rose shade and sweeping everything together, the highlight's actually less intense than you'd think. So you can see on this side, the highlight from the Rare Beauty blush is actually way more intense than what we have from the Natasha Denona. That's actually a really pretty natural looking blush. Ooh, okay. Very excited about this one so far. And then I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of this Charlotte Tilbury, because I feel like this is actually very pigmented. Let me actually dab that off on a towel and then just put this on the outskirts. Ooh, okay, that's very pretty, actually. Nice, okay, so yeah. If you have a light to medium skin tone like myself, I would recommend being a little bit careful with that, but it is really pretty, just gives that nice sort of sunburnt kind of look to the face. So I went off camera to put on some brow pencil. So here we have the final look. What do you guys think? So zooming you guys out, let's run through my overall initial impressions of all of these products. So first off, with this Makeup Forever palette, I really enjoy this on initial impressions. I would say that I wish that I had bought this before this one. If I had known that this was coming out, I probably would not have picked this up since I think realistically this is gonna be sort of an either or situation. Now that I have this new one, I probably won't use this old one as much. And so it's a little bit of a waste to have both. But I do really like this formulation and at least upon initial impressions, the blushes in this palette are really beautiful as well. So I like that this is kind of an all-in-one, even if the skin tone shades in this one are a little bit less good of a match compared to this one for me. In terms of the bronzer, I really like my initial impressions of this. I feel like the shade is really perfect for my current skin tone and the formula was really easy to apply and blend out. Again, I do find this packaging a little bit cheap compared to the price. So that's the one thing I'm not a huge fan of with this but it is a very chic appearance still, and I'm excited to have finally tried out this iconic bronzer. For the brow gel, I would say the jury's still out. This is a different way of doing brows than I'm used to, and so I feel like I didn't necessarily do the best application today. So it's more of a user error sort of situation. I feel like my brows look a little bit messy, or at least on this side. That said, this brow pomade definitely lifted my brows more than previous ones have. So if you are someone who wants a clear brow gel that does have good staying power, I think this is a really good candidate. Now, in terms of all of these blushes, I would say the House Lab one didn't really stand out on initial impression. I mean, this seemed pretty solid and I like this color, but I'll definitely have to try this out more to see if there's anything special about this formula. To start today, it just kind of looked like a nice matte blush, nothing particularly exceptional in terms of application, shade, or blendability. The Rare Beauty one is probably the highest shine blush that I have in my collection now, so it's different in that respect. I'm not sure how I feel about how luminous it is. I think it looks very strongly like a highlighter, which makes sense given that it is their same formula as the highlighter. So not necessarily the most flattering blush, I would say. I definitely think I find the sheen from the Natasha Denona to be much more flattering on my skin, but this is a really pretty shade. So I don't know. I will also have to update you guys on this. The Natasha Denona definitely overall is the blush that I enjoyed the most from today's look. I was a little worried when I swatched this highlight because it seemed so intense, but with everything swirled together, I think it actually looks really nice and natural on the skin. The highlight just provides some nice luminosity and glow that is still not as intense as the highlight on this side. And then finally for the Charlotte Tilbury, I guess I didn't use the highlighter for you guys today. I'm still not sure realistically how well I can use this, but I did really like how this blush looked. I feel like the shade, if you take a very careful hand with it, actually looks really nice and natural. It gives you that really 
pretty sort of just been in the sun kind of bronzy look. And I imagine if you lightly swirl these two together, you could probably get a really nice blush lighter situation. So I might try that next time. But let me know if you'd be interested in any follow-on content with any of these products, because today was just my first impressions. And especially with the blushes, of course, I had limited real estate in terms of where I could put them on my face. But on the whole, I feel like there were no duds in today's haul, so I'm really excited for that. And I am very much looking forward to playing around with more of these products, especially as we're entering the warmer months. I think spring, summer is especially a great time for blush and for peachy blushes and warm tone blushes. So I'll have to keep you guys posted on these products. But that's it for today's video. I would love to hear in the comments if you guys have tried any of these products, what your thoughts have been, and also if you picked up any new favorites from the Sephora VIB sale, please let me know as well. There are still a few more days left in the sale, so I'm considering possibly picking up a couple more products, and if I do, I will showcase those in future videos as well. And if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!